SRT D10 worksheet 1 introduces what's called the law of signs. Now sometimes teachers uh, in answering a question from students, does this only work in right triangles? Sometimes teachers say yes, uh, trigonometry is about right triangles. And it is, uh, but I'm about to show you how you can actually obtain sides, angles using tri trigonometry in what are called oblique triangles, which are not right triangles. Now to do it, you're going to see my little trick. I'm going to turn this thing into some right triangles. So the answer is kind of yes, you can, uh, you can use it in oblique triangles, uh, but really what it's, what's going on is we're, we're breaking it into two smaller uh, right triangles. So the way we do it is we put in that height that we saw when we did the area relationship. And I am going to <coughs> calculate the height from the left and from the right. And you'll see a nice little relationship pops up here. So this would be the sine of A is H over C. <coughs> if I cross multiply that, I get this. Now I'm going to do the same thing from the other side. So from this angle, the sine of C would be H over A. And if I cross multiply that, I get this. Now you'll notice they're both looking at the same H. And so then obviously they can be equated to each other. Sine of A, A sine of C. Now the law of sines, which we're about to derive, is usually written as a two ratios, or a proportion. <clears throat> and so I'm going to divide both sides by C and both sides by A. And in doing so, I'm going to divide by A and C, divide by A and C. You watch what will happen. The C's and the A's will cancel, and we get the sine of A over A the sine of C over C. Now, if we went back and redid the lines and so on, we would also obtain the other portion of this, which would be the sine of B over B. This is known as the law of sines. Now, some textbooks, some teachers have the lengths A, B, C on the top and the, um, and the angle relationships on the bottom. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So this is called the law of sines. Now the powerful thing about this is we just derived this for this triangle right here. <clears throat> and notice it's oblique. And so we can find sides and angles of a triangle even if it is not a right triangle. How did we do that? Well, we broke it into little right triangles. And in simplifying things, that H basically disappeared from the equation. And now we only are referencing the angles and the sides of the original triangle. This allows us to then begin to solve and look at some things. And we'll look at that underneath uh, the Elmo here in a minute. The ability for the law of sines to work is that magical pairing. And so I just want to run you through a couple of different givens and decide if the law of sines could or, or, or may not work for us. So here you have angles A and B, so you know those two values, and you have little b. So in this case, this is definitely one that would work because you'd have a pairing between this angle and this side. It's always about finding the pairing. Here you're going to see uh, an interesting little trick. We would have A, we would have B, but we would have C. Now normally we'd say, eh, doesn't work, but... If you know A and you know B, you actually get the third angle for free, as I like to say. So you actually would pull that one off. You could use the law of sines here. Three sides, on the other hand, would cause us some trouble because you'd have three sides, but there would be nobody to pair with, so our answer would be no. Same problem with three angles. You'd have all three angles, but you wouldn't have somebody to pair with. Here, I don't have to go any further. I would have a pair. This would be good. Here looks like trouble, though. Let's see. I would have this side, this side, and this angle. 
So actually, that's a no. So what? Is, let's see. So this side and this side and that angle. So in that order, I would need something else to work with. I wouldn't be able to use the law of sines. Here, I'm back on good terms because I have an angle and, uh, and I have its opposite side. All that's good. Let's look at one more little thing here. Um, a similar idea about which of the following three pieces could work. Same, same question. I won't do all of these, but immediately I see A and little a. This is going to work. Um, here's a troubled one. I've got angle B, I've got uh, side A, and I've got side C. This one would not work. So ultimately, you're looking for that magical pairing. I would always caution you that like this one, students want to say no because they don't see the pairing. But remember, if you have two angles, you can always find the third. So this would be a yes answer.